Uh, today I want to talk about doing uh, little ring bowls. I've been uh, playing with quite a few few of them, some different colors, some different designs, and uh, I want to show you how I went about doing it. Uh, I'm going to do pan pastel and just a simple dotted pattern. And uh, there's so many different things you can do. You can put uh, Kato clay on it, which gives it that nice shiny look, or uh, a good quality gloss varnish will do the same thing. Uh, this one was uh, TLS, which gave it a matte look, which I, I quite liked. Uh, this one was done with Inca Golds, lots of different colors, and uh, put Kato on top of that one too. I uh, did a couple here with uh, napkins. And uh, they're not easy to do. Your uh, flat piece of paper doesn't want to take a curve, so the, the less curve you have in your form, uh, the better it's going to be. Um, that was one of the first ones I did. It's a different shape. Um, I had to, I still had to uh, make a slit in it right here where the petal is, uh, which I thought was the most unobtrusive place to put it. And um, and very 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 carefully burnished it and then I had that one little overlap section so that wasn't too too bad but on the curved ones with the with the uh, concave curve they're even harder to do so I'm not going to show the, the napkin ones because uh, I mean go ahead and play with it but uh, they're not easy so I want to show oh yeah here's another one with uh, Kato and this one was done on black with mica powders I wasn't really crazy about about it the back was okay uh, the front yeah it's it kind of leaves me um, you know not real crazy about it but I think I will take some Inca golds and just sort of bump up the color so anyways it's, it's always fixable you can fix it with paint or Inca golds or uh, gilders paste or whatever you like so what you're going to need are, first of all, uh, some kind of form to bake on. And these are from um, uh, candle holders. And uh, that was what I found uh, the best thing to use. They're quite shallow, so it makes them a lot easier to work with. Uh, this is the one that I did with the, uh, the napkin um, here. And this is, <laughs> feels like glass, looks like metal, but I think it's glass. I don't want to drop it to find out. But um, it's fairly shallow, so that was that was okay. And then, um, so you need that, and you're going to need cutters. And since we're going to work with uh, with one of these candle holders, I'll use my largest cutter from my cutter set here. And uh, then I'm going to use to make the um, the little stem. Uh, I'm going to make it a little smaller than this one. So this one is, uh, <clears throat> let's see, it's it's one and three quarters, I believe. Yeah, yeah, just under two inches. So one and three quarters, and this one is about one and a quarter uh, for size. So just, you know, you uh, just take your cutters, put one inside the other, and see how much rim you have. And if you're happy with that, then go with that. Uh, you'll need some uh, TLS or Bacon Bond. You'll need a dotting tool. Uh, I'm using one that has, um, you know, uh, I don't know, about a two, two to three millimeter head on it. And then maybe a one, actually that's even smaller than a one millimeter. Um, so just two different sizes. Uh, I'm going to use Pan Pastels. So I've got my set here. Um, you can do this this one I just did with two colors um, these other ones I did with several colors so uh, I'm going to use several colors this time but it's really up to you what colors that you use I'm using Primo clay and uh, you need a roller and a blade and the usual stuff that you need and I'm going to apply my pan pastels with a makeup sponge um, it's uh, it goes on quite nicely so let's get started. Let's move some of this stuff aside. So the first thing I've done is I've prepared a, a sheet of clay and this is done on the thickest setting of my uh, pasta machine. And I'm just going to burnish it a little bit and get some of those, those uh, ripples from the, from the rollers out. Good enough. 
So it's as thick as you can get. I, I used a zero on my atlas, but a one would be fine. So I'm just going to cut out my circle with my largest cutter and remove the rest. So it has to be done in a couple of stages. Now let's just trim this off a little bit. Um, so you're going to bake the, uh, the concave dish part first and then you're going to bake the, the feet later. And uh, I'm going to go with the ring feet, but um, as long as I'm here I may as well show you. You could just uh, do four little balls or even three little balls, whatever works for you, and TLS them onto your uh, surface and then bake them again. And, and that works to elevate the, uh, the bowl. So I'm going to pre-color the bottom. So I'll take my sponge and some pastels. And when you're working with the pen, pastels, always start with your lightest colors first and just place these colors on. I can't get the uh, my pastel tray in, in the same shot. <laughs> Okay, so I'll start with that. That's kind of a yellowy color, and then I'll go with a minty green color. And you could use um, different parts of your makeup sponge, but I'm just going to keep uh, working in the same area till I get to the dark colors. So <clears throat> maybe I'll go with another little softer bluey minty green color. And then I'll start getting some little bit darker colors. Got a little bit of an olive color. No, it's, you know, your color choices, that's really up to you. I love working with my pan pastel, so any chance I have to, to play around with more color, I just go for it. Now this is the darker turquoise color. And I'll try to get those edges as well. Now when you work with pan pastels, if you have an opportunity like this, because it's flat, to uh, burnish that color on, um, it'll be a lot more permanent. It'll bond to the clay better. So I'll just take a minute and burnish that. And then I'll peel that off. and put it on my form, my little glass form. Uh, really good if you've got a glass one. If you have a metal one, uh, they, they still work too, but the advantage of having a glass one is that you can flip it over and you can sort of, uh, you'll see little dark spots and that's telling you there's air there. So if you just kind of press around and get those little bubbles to work their way out to the towards the edge, you'll get a a nicer smoother bottom but uh, if you trap air in there I actually kind of like it let's find one that has has air now having said that can't find one um, so you, you get these sort of voids um, <clears throat> that kind of look handmade you know I don't think it's a really bad thing So anyways, just take a minute to, to get that straightened out, and then you can go ahead and do your dotting tool. Uh, let's see here, a little bit of dirt, that's going to be okay. Um, I'm just going to smooth out that little edge from the, um, from the cutter. Okay, so the, when I did the dots, I just, I started off with the larger one, and I found it looked best if I left, uh, that one's got quite a few, if I just made it very sporadic. Uh, gives you more room for the color. And um, you want to go kind of random. And you don't have to go too deep. So I'm just going to place a bunch of random dots. 
giving a fair bit of space in between each one. Then when I do the smaller one, I kind of like to just kind of group them into little groups. And what you do is really up to you. Um, any, any way is going to look good. This is just going to give you little white dots in your surface, and I, I rather like that look. One of the hardest things to do is go random. <laughs> I used to teach uh, bird carving, and uh, we'd do birds, and I would try to tell them birds' feathers are arranged a particular way, but they fall in um, a somewhat random way, and that was the hardest thing to teach them. Um, you know, order with, with randomness. <laughs> okay, that's plenty. So now we're going to work with the same colors. So I'll start with my lightest colors. And so basically what I'm doing with this sponge is just skimming over the surface. The idea is not to get the color into the, into the uh, holes. It's just to cover the surface. I'll work with the same colors that I did last time. So that's kind of a pale yellow and a couple of pale green colors and olive and then a, a turquoise color. And if I want it darker, I'll add some ochre color, which I may do. Okay, so there's the olive. So you could, uh, if you've got acrylic paints, you could uh, go ahead and bake this without color on and paint it afterwards, doing a, kind of a similar um, skimming technique if you wanted to. Um, like I say, Inca Golds work good on this. All kinds of things work. Okay, let's get a little turquoise into there. Just a little bit of an ochre color. Just because I like how rich that color is. I did find that a darker uh, color looks better because, of course, the white dots are going to show up a bit better. color and uh, you just keep building up uh, it, it's like painting when when you're painting with uh, pan pastels um, it's basically the same technique as you do with oil painting you keep building up that color okay so that's that's that so that stage is going to be baked um, there's a couple things you can do <clears throat> before you bake it uh, I'm not going to do it this time but um, you can, um, actually you can burnish this a little bit if you're careful. <laughs> Let's do that first. If you're going to use the paper to burnish, just do a small section, lift it, and do another small section. Uh, if you try to do it all in one go, you're going to get wrinkles. So this way you, you can avoid wrinkles. So that should be good. That, that could be good and burnished. Uh, it's possible that you don't even need to seal these. But um, if you want to, there's a couple things you can do. So in this one, I did um, translucent liquid clay on it at this stage and just baked it. And it came out like this. came out matte. Um, a couple of them I did... Sorry, hitting my lamp here. Uh, Cato liquid clay, also at this stage. Just brushed it on. Uh, it requires hitting it again with the heat gun when you're uh, when it's uh, finished. So um, you know if you don't have a heat gun, you might not want to use it because it it comes out pretty matte too. And and uh, 
of the two mats, I preferred the uh, the translu uh, translucent liquid clay. So uh, other than that, you can uh, just go ahead, we'll bake this and put the feet on and uh, seal it after it's all completely done. So I'll be back when it's finished being baked. Okay, so my uh, ring dish is, uh, it's baked and it's cooled. And uh, so just one thing, if you're working with glass, start it in a cold oven and let it cool down naturally. Uh, glass doesn't like to be shocked, so it doesn't like to get too hot too fast or too cold too fast. So, um, so I've just let that cool down and now we're ready to work on it. So the next thing I'm going to do is the base. And uh, I've, I've tried a lot of different depths of it. Um, I've tried it with two thicknesses of, of clay. Uh, I've tried it with three th thicknesses of clay. Uh, I found what seemed to work the best is two of them done on the thickest setting and then one of them done slightly thinner so I put that one on a on a two on mine and uh, so I'll just roll that a little bit so that's just white primo clay again and um, so lots of different ways you can do this you can put your uh, your one cutter and and then put the other one in there and cut them both at the same time or you can cut the smaller circle out first and then the bigger one i found it easiest to cut the smaller circle out first so that's fairly simple just make sure you left yourself enough room and uh, cut it out and now when you put your second one on and notice i'm working on a piece of paper that's going to help me quite a bit so you want to stand over it uh, and look down directly um, it's really hard to get that perfectly centered but if you spin that around you'll be able to see whether or not you're centered so that's pretty close I can see that my cutter is a little crooked but uh, we'll just work with that and then push that down and get rid of the excess clay And push that out so that's not too too bad at all so I'm going to color that now with my pan pastels so again I'm just going to start with uh, basically the same colors and I'm going to leave one side not colored so that's the side that's going to be TLS onto uh, onto the uh, ring bowl So I'll just grab a few of these colors. Get rid of that seam a little bit. Should have done that before I, I put the TLS on. Or not the TLS, but the pan pastels on. But anyways... forget to color the inside of the ring and with pen pastels you can go uh, light to dark which is probably the easiest way to do it you can also go dark to light um, so they work a lot like uh, like painting with uh, with paints Okay, that's not too bad. That's covered. So we'll take the, uh, the ring bowl. I won't be needing this anymore. And I'm going to turn it upside down and I'll get some TLS on it. So I've got another container here sitting upside down so that it'll come out for me. Uh, and uh, I'm going to put it over top of the whole surface and that, that will be my sealer. Now, before you do this, um, 
you could choose to use a sanding sponge and uh, scuff up the edges, uh, whatever kind of look you like. But just for the sake of simplicity, we'll just uh, I'll just put this t um, translucent liquid clay, the Sculpey on. So I want a really, really thin coat, uh, nothing that's going to be dripping in the uh, oven. And uh, speaking of ovens, uh, I cured it for an hour because that's what I generally do. But um, it, since it's going to be baked twice, an hour might be overkill. You might not have to do it really for an hour. If you prefer to do it for 45 minutes, 50 minutes, that would be adequate. Uh, I wouldn't go less than 45 minutes myself. It takes time for the uh, plasticizers to be completely uh, um, cured. So I could have spread this out with my finger, but I'm going to use a brush and clean it up later. And uh, let's see, maybe I'll get a little, oh, I'll put that on after. Okay, centering. <laughs> that's that's the fun part too. So there's a couple things you can do. You can use a ruler and sort of eyeball where it is and then just keep spinning it around and uh, and measure and adjust as you go. Uh, it always seems one side is more shallow than the other, so move it over a bit. Um, I, I generally find if I just turn this thing around in all angles, I'll usually see about where it's, it wants to go. And I'll put a little TLS on that. I won't put it on this top surface. Uh, because if I, if I bake on paper, it's going to stick to the paper. If I bake on tile, you're okay. You could put it on the top surface. But um, better to avoid it and maybe just hit it with a little matte varnish or something later on. I could have been doing this with Kato liquid clay also, but then, like I said, I'd have to hit it with the heat gun, and I don't mind this matte look at all. So that should stick pretty good. Uh, I'll get my card. Okay, I've got a, a fresh index card here. I'm just going to flip this over, and uh, see, it's not going to move pretty tacky. So I'll put it down like that and uh, if I wanted the TLS on the top surface I could be putting that on now but you have to watch that it doesn't shift but uh, really what I'm going to do is just go ahead and bake that and then I'll treat the top surface later on. So I'll be back after that's baked again. So here it is out of the oven and uh, that's what it looks like with the TLS on the back. You can barely tell it's there but that'll protect it. And uh, so for the top surface, like I said, I could choose to put Kato clay on it and make it shiny, or I could have done TLS and make it matte, uh, just for something different. Uh, I'm going to use DuraClear high gloss polyurethane varnish. Um, I'm not a big fan of applying varnish. <laughs> I, I have a hard time with it, you know, trying to get it so it doesn't show brush strokes, but We'll put this on because I do want a bit of a glossy finish on it. So I'm using a, a fairly wide brush. Uh, you'll get less brush strokes that way, but I don't think there's any way to completely avoid them. And I'm just going in kind of a crosshatch pattern. Just very, very lightly stroking over the surface, trying to minimize those brush strokes. So uh, another thing that can work is you can use that makeup sponge if you've got a bit of a clean surface. And uh, you can brush over it with a with the sponge and that'll take out some brush strokes it leaves other strokes behind but it's just so
Same thing, just going over it as lightly as I can. That's why I, I really like using Kato. Um, you don't see any strokes behind. Yeah, that's not too, too bad. That kind of made it a little more matte, even though I used the gloss. But um, anyways, that's, that's that. It's sealed. And you can use it as a ring dish or soap dish or whatever you want if it's well sealed. So just one other quick thing I wanted to talk about, and that is um, using ink of gold on, uh, on your uh, pattern surface. And when this is baked, it's uh, really quite permanent, and you, you may not even need to seal it at all. So I'm, I'll just demonstrate really quickly. You're going to use your fingers probably. I'm going to use, uh, this is green yellow ink of gold. And this one is cobalt blue. So uh, you can do it with a brush, but uh, uh, so say for the underside, uh, I did the one that I did do with a brush and just, just kept brushing until I, I liked what I had. The top surface you're going to want to do with your finger though, because you want to skim over those uh, little spots. So I'll, I'll apply the these two colors, and you could use as many colors as you want, but just for demonstration, put the green all over top of it, and then uh, let's get back over here, start working with some of the blue. Go back into the green, and you can just layer layer this as much as you like. And you'll be surprised how permanent that is after it's cured. So that's that's a good thing to to use on these bowls. Anyways, that's it. I don't really think I need to do any more than that. And um, I hope you enjoyed this week's video. And if you did, leave a, a thumbs up for me, please. And uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.